requirements for this to run and you can add other options as well because with, with VirtualBox for instance you can say I want my machine to have 2 gigs of memory I want to give this, this, this name, CentOS 6 and um, you can also do stuff with, uh, with, with guest editions and um, if you don't like VirtualBox with VMware then you, you, can, you can switch you can, you can also work with both if you want um, HashiCorp has this uh, uh, philosophy where they want uh, their environments to be composable because in the DevOps world there are so many contenders for uh, containers, for uh, virtual machines, uh, for platforms, for cloud platforms. Everybody has this sort of basic idea like, okay, where is this now going and should we go for this or, or that and can we sort of choose later? And with these tools, uh, that is possible. You can sort of refactor stuff to say, okay, I don't like virtual box, I want more performance, I want enterprise quality virtual machines. You can do this. So, last time I gave the talk, I just took the images of the net that were fully installed already for virtual box. And for virtual box, you can get every kind of operating system that you want. You don't need to do this. Huh? It's only if you have to, if you do it for a reason, you can do it again. Like get that image, do a kickstart, install Ansible with the shell script, and then do your thing. Because every company is different. Huh? What they do, their software, their, their rule sets, their history, their stories, and it's all reflected in how the software it needs to be installed for it to work and to be compliant or okay and QA and so on. Uh, so I hope that Ansible will help you to the rescue. Um, and maybe this example helps. Because this is the new part where um, there's a lot of curly braces, but that is for Packer. Uh, this is a fragment of a, a JSON file that Packer takes to create an image. And here you say, I want to run this script, Ansible, and it will just install Ansible with requirements. And then afterwards you run the, the Packer, the provisioner that runs in Packer. And I made a role, and also the security bit is. Uh, it's already done in the bar. So maybe let's go to the demo. Can you read this? What should I Yeah. Like this. The favorite. Yep. Six. Automated. It reminds me of Windows. Now you can sit on your chair, relax, and wait while Windows is installed on your computer. Yeah, well, this is uh, particularly why I test. This box is already cached here, so this remote connection. It's all, this is all local to this machine. And, um, now it starts <coughs> bootstrapping this machine. This is a simple example where it will install uh, Java with uh, a role by uh, uh, Jeff Gerling. He wrote a book, Ansible for DevOps. It's a Packer uh, sort of uh, roll your own publisher. For ten for ten euros or so, you get a digital copy, and he updates this regularly. So and he also responds to uh, pull requests and uh, issues, and he is sort of really productive with roles on Galaxy. So uh, a lot of stuff that you don't want to. Uh, 
create a playbook for. Uh, you can you can look at his roles, and most of them are just good out of the box because he spent a lot of time on it. Are you taping this? If possible. Yeah. Well. Okay. But, uh, this is actually doing the remote network call, so we're waiting for the guest. Backblaze guest to do this. Um, but to continue the story, um, this is the, the, the backup file in, uh, in the hole where if you build a box, you can do a piece of the provisioning. And when you do a vagrant up or a vagrant provision, you can do also a uh, provision. Oh, wait, we have, we have live data here. Um, this is the role uh, that does the hardening bit, and this was uh, developed by Ansible with uh, MindPoint Group. Um, in the USA, there is a, a government organization called DISA, and they that is a Department of Defense agency that sets norms for hardening operating systems, databases, yeah, you name it. Um, this role will audit your system and also make changes to make it compliant to a government standard. And uh, this is for uh, US government contractors, a way to deliver a compliant CentOS operating system. And this is now uh, uh, ready for production and the next operating system that will be done with rules will be the Ubuntu flavor. Uh, but yeah, I don't know when that will appear, but this, this one uh, works and now again it is getting some uh, security files from the internet. But what I wanted to tell is that this is during the kickstart I only add a little bit of Ansible and then when I start to provision the box this is what happens in Vagrant Up. So, and it is only this bit. It's two rows for a short example. The Vagrantable project is ready for Fedora, CoreOS, Ubuntu and Rancher OS. So I can do a favorite of Core OS and it will start a Core OS operating system and prep it for Ansible. Uh, Rancher OS, uh, it's very new. It's a uh, work in progress. I, mean, I don't have a use case for it yet, but maybe you know. Uh, but Core OS, you're interested. Who, who else is. Uh, Looking into Core OS as a Docker, uh, are you willing to do a talk uh, next time? Uh, with yeah. that? That's it. I think I'm way up over my time with 15 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. It's low. It is low. It's nice. So, um, let's say it's nice that you say it is hardened, but. Um, Prove it. It's also included. This, this DISA agency, they create a sort of an XML document that can audit your whole Linux and say what's wrong with it. Um, it's about uh, 170, 180 tests that can run. Uh, and I download um, that set and um, also a set with uh, Red Hat vulnerabilities. And um, so you can run this on during provisioning, but you can also run it yeah, when you have your audit, uh, when you want to show off to your auditors. Because this uh, uh, .mil uh, source for security stuff is usually uh, impressive enough. And there actually there is this, this, this report here I pulled it to my box and then here we have the scan report 
Yeah, this is a bad one. It's 95 <coughs> clients. So I think that I don't run the auditing, but other parts are okay. Um, yeah, the audit demon is not running at, at this moment because it will blow up with all the changes that I make during provisioning. For the rest, that looks good. And it will, yeah, it will tell you if you, if you have a failing test, you can you can look it up, and it will say, okay, you, you need to fix this. Uh, so it will tell you there's a, a number I know, of the rule set, and then there's a finding, and then it will tell you this relates to uh, the security report, and it will also tell you what to do. So you can also fix your provisioner to get to a uh, high grade. Uh, quality and security. So I think that is uh, about what I want to say. We're uh, MAC3 classified at 95%. So that's it. Thank you for your interest. Papel. It's your show.